continues the man in range. In this video, we're going to talk about how is it that we can write and find the continuous domain and range of specifically graphs, okay, like we see right here in our examples. So let's get started. First of all, let's not forget that when we talk about continuous domain and range, what we are talking about is that, first of all, the word continuous It comes from the idea that our equation is unbroken and it forms a line. So it's from here, from this point, it continues, it doesn't break all the way to the end point. Okay? So with that in mind, let's remember that that is going to bring us different uh, needs. So first of all, Domain is the set of all x values. We know that for a fact. So when I'm looking at my graph, let's not forget that this is the x axis. So I need to focus on my smallest x value and my largest x value. How would that occur in my graph? Okay, so following my line, my smallest x value is always to the left. So how far to the left does my line go? I know that it's right here. So this is the smallest x value, which in this case is negative 5. So my smallest x value is negative 5. So that means that the smallest x for my line is negative 5. Now, I'm going to focus in the opposite, which is the largest x value. And the largest x value, I'll find it all the way to the right, right here. So in this case, is this number right here that happens to be a positive 5. So my largest x value is a 5. The largest x is 5. So now, I need to say, using mathematical symbols, then my x values for this graph are going to go from the smallest x, which is a negative 5, to the largest x, that is positive 5. So from negative 5 to positive 5. And these symbols right here is what they are going to help us do that. Since we're talking about domain, the x is in the middle, these symbols are always going to be facing the same direction because the smallest x is always to your left and the largest x is always to your right. So this is going to say from negative 5 to positive 5. So what this means is this line is going to touch every x value from negative 5 to positive 5 and every number in between from 0.5 to 0.7 to 0.75 to 0.00000075, etc., etc. So this notation is helping us say, say from this number to this number and any number in between. Which now we're going to do exactly the same for the range. So range we know is the set of the y values. So now in my graph. I'm going to focus on the y-axis, which is this one right here. And I need to know again, what is the smallest y-value? The smallest y-value, I will find it all the way to the bottom. So the lowest this line gets is right here. This is the most to the bottom that the line gets. In this case, this is a negative 4. So my smallest y value is negative 4. The smallest y equals negative 4. Now I need to do exactly the same for the largest y value. And that I'm going to find at the very top. Now, this is at the very top or the highest point the line gets, which in this case is up here. 
I know that my line ends right here, but the highest point will be up here. And that's what I care about the highest point. So in this case, the highest point is this one right here. And it happens to be a 5. So my largest y value is a 5. Largest y is a 5. Now what I want to say is that the y values for this line go from negative 4 to 5. And how do I say it with symbols? Here again, we have our inequalities. Now I'm talking about range, so I have a Y in between because it's the Y values. But notice how the symbols stay exactly the same because the smallest number is going to be always here, large is here. So this is going to go from negative 4 to 5. Let's look at a different example. I have my line, but now we have these arrows. We need to talk about those arrows. Okay, we're going to start exactly the same way. So, I know that the domain is the set of all x values. That's not changing. I'm going to start exactly the same. I need to know what the smallest x value is. And I know that the smallest x value I'm going to find it all the way to the, this is my x-axis, I'm going to find it all the way to the left, which in this case will be right here. But there is an arrow, and we know that an arrow means that this is going to keep going. And now this is keeps going forever. Every time that he keeps going up, I know this is going up. But every time it's going to get a little more to the left, a little more to the left, a little more to the left, a little more to the left. So when I ask, what is the smallest x value? This line is going to go and go and go and go forever. And since we're pointing to the negative side, this will be considered the negative infinity. Now... I need to go and find the largest x value. This is about using our imagination. So the largest x value, I find it to the right. Here I find, oh, this is the more that the line gets to the right. But then I notice again an arrow, meaning this is going to keep going and going and going forever. So this line will continue moving to the right little by little forever. And since it's pointing to the right, that will be infinity. So the largest x value is infinity. So here's where things are going to get a little complicated if we don't think about what we're doing. I want to say that my line, since it keeps going forever, is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So I'm not going to use this notation because when I go from negative infinity to positive infinity that means all numbers and when that happens we're gonna say all real numbers which means any number we can think of now this is not necessarily gonna be the same when we go into the y values. So we know that the range is the set of all y values. I know this is my y-axis, the one that goes up and down. So I'm still going to focus first on the smallest y value. So what is the smallest y value? The lowest the line gets, which in this case happens to be a negative 6. So my smallest y is a negative 6. Very good. Now I'm going to do my largest y. The highest the line gets. Well, the highest the line gets is actually right here at 5. But I know that this is going to keep going forever. And if this is going to keep going forever, then that'll be an infinity. Because we're pointing to the positive side. 
So this is gonna go my largest y value is an infinity. The largest y is an infinity. So what I wanna say is that my y values are going to go from a negative six to infinity. And how do I write that? From negative six to infinity. But here we have to do something extra. Infinity is not really a number, it's more like an idea. So every time you have infinity in one of your symbols, we never put that line under. So that's the way it would look. Okay, now we're gonna talk about this concept right here. Holes, which they look like an empty circle. Okay, sometimes a function approaches a point, but never actually touches the point. And the only way that we can reference about how far does it get is by saying that it's almost to that particular point. This is what we call a hole. You're always going to know that you're going to have a hole because they show up as an empty circle on your graph, like this one right here. Okay, so what we're saying is that the line gets super close to negative 2 in this case. So close that that's the only reference that we have. So let's talk about that. If we're going to write domain and range for this point, every time that you are cl in the hole, the only thing that is going to change is that in your symbol, is going to be without the line under. I know that sounds a bit of confuser, so let's let's do this. Let's go step by step. Let's start with the domain, the x-axis. So I know that I need to go from the smallest, so the furthest to the left, which is going to be this point right here, to the largest, which is going to be this point right here. And that happens to be a 4. So I want to say that my line is going to go from a negative 2 to a 4. But right here at negative 2, I have an empty hole. So from negative 2 to 4. The only thing that is going to change is my symbol. So this symbol right here, since that's where I have my empty circle, is going to look like that the symbols are still pointing in the same direction it's just that this symbol doesn't have the line under now what about the four i don't have an empty circle there i'm going to put my whole symbol there <laughs> with the line under or the equal part of the symbol now let's do the range so for the range, I know that I need to focus on my y-axis, which is this one right here. And my smallest y-value is the lowest that the line gets, which is right here. Which is right here, which happens to be a negative 1. And then the highest the line gets up here is this point, which happens to be a 3. So my line I know goes from a negative 1 to a 3. So at negative 1, I have a regular point. So my symbol is going to look with the line under. But then at the very top, I happen to have an empty circle, which is what we call a hole. So at that one, my symbol I still put in the, looking at the same direction. That's not changing. But in this case, I'm not going to have the line under just the symbol at the 3. Let's do one last example, okay? Here we have a graph where we are having a circle and an arrow. So that, that's going to be interesting. So let's start from the beginning. Let's start with the domain. I know the domain is all my x values. So I'm going to go on my x-axis, left to right. 
as small as x, I'll find it the, close, the more to the left, which happens to be right here. That's a negative 3. My, my small is x. It's a negative 3. That's the number I'm going to use. Then I have my highest one, which will be all the way to the right, which is right here. But I notice I have an arrow that says that this keeps going. So this is going to keep going forever. That's going to be an infinity. So infinity. So now I need to say that my x values are going to go from negative 3 to infinity. Again, I have my symbols ready, always pointing in the same direction, x in the middle for domain. So this is going to go from negative 3, no line under, because that's an empty circle. So no line under. All the way to infinity, and no line under as well because infinity doesn't get the equal part. So here we have both sides, symbols looking in the same direction, but in those cases, we're not gonna have the line unders. This is gonna be my domain. Here because I have a hole, and here because I have infinity. Now let's focus on the range. We know that the range is all the y values. And I need to focus on my y-axis. So for my smallest y, I know I need to focus on the lowest the line gets, which happens to be right here at 1. So my smallest y is a 1. It will be a 1 what I'm going to use. Then the highest it gets is up here. But one more time, we keep getting this idea that this line is going to keep going and going and going, never stopping. So this actually is going to go little by little moving up until infinity. This is never going to stop. So in this case, my largest y value is going to be infinity. So I want to say that my y values are going to go from 1 to infinity. So from 1, but remember that at 1 we have that empty circle, no line under, all the way to infinity. So we're going to put infinity as the largest, and we never put the equal in infinity. So here I have my domain, here I have my range. One last thing that I want to say. Just because you have a hole on one side, that doesn't mean that the other side, you're always going to remove the equal. No, this is because we have a hole on one side and then an arrow on the other one, meaning infinity, and we never do that.